blue light glasses, blue blockers, blue light blocking glasses, blue light blocking glasses have become so popular. But do they actually work and are they worth the cost? What if I said that the blue blocking glasses that cost you about $100 are completely useless and don't actually do anything? A new study says blue light glasses don't actually do much. Well, if we're to listen to mainstream media outlets like the BBC, this is what a brand new study has supposedly proven. So did they really prove it? Are blue blockers just a complete waste of time and money and should you just throw your pair in the trash? Well, the only way to know is by looking at what these researchers actually studied. So if we go to the paper and scroll down, we can see that they only looked at a handful of measures. With regards to sleep, of the six studies that they looked at, half of those studies reported substantial improvements in sleep scores. Perhaps the main reason why people even wear blue blockers in the first place is to preserve and boost a hormone called melatonin. Melatonin is one of the main antioxidants in the brain and an essential hormone with just a bunch of protective properties. It's intricately linked with the natural circadian rhythm, but its release from the pineal gland in the brain can be suppressed by exposure to blue light at nighttime. And so with that in mind, the main reason for wearing blue blockers is to support melatonin levels through filtering out that blue light. So given that this is quite important, did they actually measure this? Well, no, they didn't. None of these studies assess serum melatonin levels. In fact, none of the studies even measured macular health, yet the media is saying that blue blockers are useless and don't protect the eyes. In short, this is junk science reporting. But we're still left with the question, is there any actual science to support the use of blue blockers? Blue blockers have been shown time and time again to improve melatonin levels, like in this study on pregnant women, or in this study, or how about this one in children, or in this one, which not only showed improvements in melatonin, but this was also accompanied by significant improvements in sleep latency and efficiency. Or how about this review published just two years ago looking at 24 studies? This one found substantial evidence that blue blockers improve multiple sleep parameters. So this is really just the tip of the iceberg, but does this mean that any old blue blockers would work? Well, no, it doesn't. And this is a problem with research in this field. This is because not all blue blocking glasses are created equal. You see, the blue blocking glasses which have clear lenses like these are probably not gonna have any effect on sleep. These lenses are only designed to block a certain portion of the light spectrum, and this portion is the one that's been shown to cause free radical damage to the eyes. However, a much broader range of the blue is known to suppress melatonin. So these glasses will categorically not work for that yet they're still referred to as blue blocking glasses, and this is problematic for obvious reasons. Now, if you want to block out all of the blue light, amber colored lenses are absolutely essential for this purpose. But to complicate things even further, it's not just blue light at night which suppresses melatonin, because green light also does this. And the problem is amber lenses don't block the green. So what can you actually do about it? Well, the only effective lenses to use are gonna be the dark amber or red lenses like these ones. As you can see from the testing that they've done, this type of lens essentially blocks out 100% of the blue and the green light. In doing so, it completely protects the eyes from light sources which can disrupt the circadian rhythm. Now, one thing I could tell you is that most of the studies on blue blockers do not use red lenses like these, and so that's probably one of the reasons why there are such mixed results. So these are hands down the best ones that I know of, and they're made by a company called Bon Charge. Now it's no secret that I'm affiliated with this company, and if you go back to this video, you'll see that I've been using these and recommending these glasses from this company for over four years. Now, back then they were known as Blue Blocks, now they're called Bon Charge. So if you wanna get a 15% discount on a pair of Blue Blockers which actually work, click the link in the description below and you can use the promo code at checkout, E-O-N. And what's great is that these guys also ship worldwide. So E-O-N promo code for a 15% discount. But coming back to the topic, does this mean that clear lenses like this are essentially useless? Well, no, it doesn't. 
They still serve a purpose, but it's just not for sleep. One of the main arguments against blue blocking glasses is that sunlight contains infinitely more blue light than any electronic device. There is no evidence that the blue light from your mobile device is harmful. We get around 30 times more blue light from the sky. Whilst this is true, what they don't tell you is that full spectrum light has a completely different effect on the eye compared with artificial light. As you can see, these artificial lights, the modern lights that we're exposed to on a daily basis, they're spiked in the blue. They contain a lot more blue, whereas full spectrum light contains all of the colors in perfect balance. Now guys, this is extremely important because although you get more blue light from the sun, the red and infrared help to counteract those negative effects. For example, blue light triggers reactive oxygen species, which can lead to free radical damage in the eye. But at the same time, red and infrared light does the opposite, increases the output of antioxidants. This effectively acts as a counterbalance, which protects the cells. So when you isolate the blue part of the light spectrum, you have this tendency to get this oxidative damage in the cells of the eye, because it's not protected by the red and near infrared. For this reason, you should be really mindful of your light exposure indoors, but less concerned when going outside. In simple terms, the eye is perfectly designed and adapted for sunlight, but it never evolved to deal with artificial light from indoor lighting. Now, there have been numerous studies and scientific reviews highlighting the potential dangers of blue light exposure. And this is even outside of the context of sleep hygiene. Here, I'm not gonna waste time going through all of the research, but what I'll do is I'll link a bunch of the studies and you can read them in the description if you're interested. So now I hope you have a more accurate grasp on these recent reports and are better equipped to make more healthy decisions with regards to what light you expose yourself to and at what time of day. So that's everything for today and I will see you next time.